Well, hello and welcome back, everybody. Um, and I am sure you're very much looking forward uh, to our next session, uh, like myself, because this is a, a fundraising case study, investing in tomorrow. Um, so I'm really, really excited to hearing more about the story of uh, our Sansar, uh, told by Julia Krebska, the founding director of uh, this UK charity. She will be taking us through her experience of navigating an unprecedented new fundraising landscape in the wake of COVID-19. Um, she will explore how the charity adapted its fundraising techniques and embraced change in order to continue its work amid very challenging circumstances. And I know this will resonate with many members of our audience today. Um, so without further ado, let me hand over to Julia. It's really, really good to have you here. A very well welcome to you. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you, Lisa. Um, so, yeah, so my name is Julia Krebska, and I'm the um, founding director of Our Sansa, um, a charity operating in Nepal for the past 14, day, 14 years, um, in parts where there's no other charities doing um, the same type of um, work as us. So today, um, I would like to talk about how we grew our funding and projects over the past few years. Um, we tried uh, many different approaches, and today I wanted to focus on how important independent documentary films have been for our fundraising. Um, I will talk very briefly about our Sansa's history, um, just to give you a tiny bit of background, and then I will move on to discussing what worked for us, why and how we successfully approached different types of funders. Um, following the release of the documentaries showing our work and the difference um, it made to our charity. Well, so first of all, very briefly, um, I founded our Sansa in 2009, um, and at the time we only had one small educational project, and then we started working with street children and focused on a lot of research um, in that area of Nepal on different issues the country was facing at the time. And by 2021, we had three large programs um, operating in southern Nepal, um, focusing on street children, trafficked children, and girls who have been victims of gender-based violence. Um, in 2022, we had the launch of our pilot um, for our larger program, and to child labor in Nepal. And this is when the Vice World News documentary on our work got released. Um, at the start of 2023, uh, we expanded the very successful child labor program and may also made um, plans for replication um, already of the program into other areas uh, of Nepal. Um, we were also the winners uh, of the charity awards in the UK uh, in the international aid and development category. Um, then there was another documentary made um, about the same project, but it was a year later by an independent reporter from Poland um, for a really, really good TV station. And then it was released online or you, on YouTube with English subtitles so we could reach quite a wide um, audience. It showed the program um, a year on and what impact our work um, has had on the lives of the children and the local communities. And recently, um, we're very happy to say that we have been selected as finalists for the .org Impact Awards in the Quality of Education for All category. Um, okay, um, so next thing, um, maybe we can get the next slide. Um, um, I would like to talk about navigating through the recent challenging times. I think it's been very, very tough for majority of the charities. It um, has been a great, great challenge for us. Um, however, we actually managed to expand our projects in, uh, in recent years uh, due to obviously COVID, natural disasters in Nepal, financial global situation. The need for our help really, really increased dramatically. Um, so we had to act, um, but we needed more money, of course, same as everyone else. Um, we had to be more creative uh, in our approach to fundraising. Um, so there's obviously so many people struggling, many charities are struggling, and the need for support is growing and growing and growing. 
Um, so as a result, we had to adjust. Um, we had to rely less on events and any other public fundraising uh, as well. Um, so in terms of trust fundraising, we spent, for example, less time on so submitting general funding applications, but we focus more on a lot of research and really, really thorough research of possible funders. We started using more uh, funding databases together with the usual charity commission, our website search. Um, we also became a little bit bolder, uh, more direct uh, with our emails, phone calls and so on um, to the funders. Um, but thanks to the um, independent documentary on our work, we're able to approach funders also that normally would not accept unsolicited proposals or those that um, tend to be more difficult to reach by smaller charities like ours, for example, foundations set up by larger uh, companies. Um, you know, we've always focused on impact sustainability, but we really, really um, started focusing on it more and actually uh, communicating it um, to the funders uh, in a clearer way. Um, with impact, we don't really focus on um, huge, just huge, huge numbers, uh, but on real difference um, that projects actually are making uh, on the lives of the children, families and local communities. Um, we conduct more detailed surveys at the moment. Uh, we're getting more testimonials and ensure that we address any issues mentioned by the communities. Um, and we really clearly communicate it to the funders, both good and bad sort of news. Um, in terms of sustainability, we ensure that each of our projects can be easily replicated to other areas. Um, as the projects have been successful, we have funders now that ask us to fund replication of the projects or part fund the replication. And I would like to talk about the actual documentaries. So who and how? So we had two um, independent documentaries made about our work in the last couple of years. Um, the first one was the Vice World News documentary uh, in 2022. And that showed our work with children who used to work uh, in brick factories. Um, it was a really strong, quite short documentary showing the real situation in Nepal and how our Sansar rescued the children, what support was provided to the families and the communities. It was filmed following the undercover investigation that we did and showed the beginning of the project. And then this year, exactly a year later, there was another documentary made, um, the, the one for the Polish um, TV with a brilliant Polish reporter uh, showing the results basically of our work. So the impact the project has had uh, on the children, the families over the year. Uh, so this acted as sort of independent confirmation, verification um, and evaluation of the project. So the documentaries that we find were great, not just for the profile raising, because we are um, you know, still a small charity. Many people don't even know how to pronounce our name, but um, they can have a long term impact. So they give basically funders all the info that they need. So they show the needs, the actual the activities, the progress of the project, and it all has been um, externally checked, uh, verified. Um, in terms of finding the reporters, so again, um, there's a lot of research to be done. Um, so um, I spent a lot of time finding a reporter who would report on similar issues to, to ours that somebody who would have passion um, for similar causes. So, you know, you can go through YouTube, Google and so on, see if the reporters are still active or even if they've done similar documentaries um, in the past. So read any articles about them or uh, about them or by them. Um, see if they can get basically passionate about your cause. Um, this is very, very important because if they can get passionate, they can then go out of their way to, to sell your story um, or combine your story with another story that they might be working on. Um, but also what we found was very important is to see what channels um, they have worked with in the past. 
um, you need to assess, I suppose, if these channels are appropriate um, for your audience uh, and if they have um, opportunities to reach a wider audience. Um, and do they tend to post this sort of um, content as well um, on their channels? Um, also, are the channels online and how long will you be able to use the material for? For example, um, from our experience, an article in a newspaper could be great in the short term for immediate donations um, and can also be a great verification of your work. Um, however, if you manage to get a documentary done about your work that stays online for a long time, you might be able to use it for longer and for a variety of donors, including trusts and foundations. Okay, so now when we um, found our reporter, how do we work with them? That's also quite a long process. Um, in our case, the reporter, the brilliant Saha Zand, checked us out very properly first, and then we had a, a brainstorming call. Um, she told us what she was most passionate about, what she would like to um, report on, what issues she was working on at the time, and she knew what different media could be interested in. Um, and now she would like to um, report on other underreported issues that we are working on. Um, so after you manage to connect uh, with the reporter, share your stories with them, loads of case studies, give them different options as well. Show them what projects you are working on at the moment, what issues you are addressing, or even what you're thinking about for the future. Um, the reporters then will assess if they can get any of the stories commissioned by different channels. Um, so sometimes, you know, we might feel really passionate about our causes, the reporter might feel really passionate, but the actual channel, you know, editors um, can just say, well, it's not newsworthy enough or might have been already covered by um, different um, reporters in the, in the past. Um, so ensure that straight away you give them really strong case studies, good images, um, or videos, some sort of proof, um, you know, of the issues that you are working on, or if there's lack of certain resources, you know, in certain areas, also show them a proof of that, because then they need to be able to sell the story to the channels, and they need to have a hook, so something that will attract the producer's attention. Um, in our case, we had quite a lot of undercover videos done, None of them um, were made professionally. They were all done by our staff uh, who did the undercover investigation of the brick factories, but they showed the reality on the ground. And also the channels used those uh, clips as well in the actual um, documentaries. Um, okay, um, can we have next slide, which is um, basically impact on fundraising um, of these um, documentaries. Um, so, um, we saw um, increase in uh, regular donations, which is great, and increase in um, just individual donations quite soon after both of the documentaries were released. However, it wasn't, you know, um, such a huge difference um, financially, but um, because both were released on YouTube, um, we managed to attract funders, um, you know, donors from different countries, uh, which was really, really good. And we are still being contacted by different people from different locations offering different type of support. Um, I'm sure that the, those documentaries also helped us win at the charity awards and also to become the finalist uh, of the .org Impact Awards. Um, it was, of course, the projects that got selected, but I think um, this external independent verification of the work and also great visuals um, helped to attract the attention. Um, as a result of the documentaries and then the awards, we received a lot of positive feedback, for example, from our existing funders, um, you know, with many of them sending me emails saying how proud they are to support a you know, charity like ours. And some have already extended the funding, um, including unrestricted funding. And uh, with um, any new funders, so thanks to the videos and the awards, we managed to get attention from foundations that might not usually be accepting 
unsolicited proposals or those that would usually fund larger organizations. So both the documentaries um, and the awards have been acting as a confirmation that we're basically doing an okay job. Um, and in terms of new engagement, yes, we saw a lot of that. Um, with the corporate sector, um, I can give you one example. Um, it's quite a recent example in the past um, few months. Um, is of one quite large US uh, company. So the founder found um, the video uh, on uh, Vice, one of the Vice channels um, about the brick factories and contacted me to see how they could get involved. Um, we had a very long meeting, I think um, probably one of the longest in my life, but really, really productive. Um, they got very passionate about the cause. They are already supporting different uh, causes abroad um, as well. So we exchanged then a lot of calls, um, information, um, and after that they actually allocated one staff member from the office who has relevant experience from the past um, to help us with fundraising in the US. Um, so they want to get involved long term and help us with the replication uh, of some of the projects and basically adopt us as the main charity. So they are just working on their new website where they would include all of our um, details and are already reaching out to different funders in the in the US. Um, we also noticed a lot of in, basically increased interest um, in the charity and in the issues as well that we are addressing. Um, so the funders that have been supporting us um, in the past after seeing the videos already offered to extend the funding uh, for the next few years and some new ones approached us to see if they can fund um, the replication if we are interested in replicating some parts of the projects. Um, we also saw much more interest from the public. So. Um, Many people have been contacting us and offering different types of assistance. There is much more um, engagement in general. But also, I think what's really, really important, both the awards and the uh, documentaries really helped us with gaining trust, you know, and within different types of donors. Um, this is so, so, so important. Um, it's even easier for us now, for example, to present our own short uh, videos that we have about the projects, you know, with our beneficiaries or staff and so on. And they are not being treated as basically some promotional videos, but uh, they're taken seriously um, because of the weight of the documentaries, um, you know, because they were basically confirmation of our work. And of course, this has led to increased income. Um, you know, in our case, in the past three years, we actually doubled our income and it is still growing. I mean, we are still a small charity, but that was a huge step, um, huge improvement. Um, okay, and um, the next thing um, I wanted to talk about is uh, approaching new funders. Uh, and what worked um, for us. Um, so, as usual with um, funding applications, it's all about research, research, research. Like often with my uh, research of any new foundations, um, well, it takes even longer than, than preparing the actual funding proposal. Um, so, um, I always check what causes they support, but really, really properly. Um, check the criteria very carefully, um, go through their accounts and see what the average amounts granted are and what kind of charities get the majority um, of the funding. Uh, I find that sometimes you can find a lot of nuances um, in the uh, accounts as they often differ to what's presented on the actual websites. Um, if you are approaching the foundations that do not accept um, unsolicited proposals, um, what worked for us was a really bold approach. Um, so use something that will grab the attention and then they might start a dialogue with you. Um, don't send them, of course, um, funding proposals because, um, yeah, we might just annoy them. Um, but what worked for us was sending a very short direct email with the link to the documentary and very short intro. Um, that 
sometimes drew their attention and then we were asked for more information and then it led to us being invited um, to submit uh, our full proposal. Um, it won't work for so many of these funders, of course, so we don't approach that many. Um, so um, I would really advise to do a proper research and like we would only approach those that we fit criteria like 100% only. Um, we also started using more visuals comparing to let's say five, six years ago, even for the more traditional trusts and foundations. Um, but it's not just the photos, but also graphs. And then I use like small photos with, within a story. So they don't fill up any extra space within the application um, form, um, but um, I insert small images under the text um, that describes the story of a child or a family or of the support provided. So basically the photos tell the story um, themselves. Um, okay, and just the last thing um, that I wanted to, to show you is the resources to check out. Um, so um, I think probably most of you uh, know Ask Charity and Dot Star Media. Um, if not, I would really recommend signing up and uh, you can put relevant keywords and then you can receive notifications from journalists looking for different stories. So once you receive a relevant request, uh, reply as quickly as possible uh, with a story and uh, images. Um, the next one is Factal, so which is a great service. And you can contact them and ask for a free charity subscription. Um, you wouldn't get the news of any important events happening anywhere around the world before they even reach the media um, for your selected locations. Um, you can use that then to contact journalists or to even prepare your own fundraising campaigns. Um, next one is Help Film, um, absolutely amazing uh, charity that helps um, other charities make um, basically videos, films uh, for free or for a donation. Um, the quality is absolutely amazing, they're very professional, um, team is really, really helpful and they really know um, what works for, for charities. Um, and the last uh, last two ones is Google News that um, I use a lot. Um, so this is great when you are researching reporters or journalists. And then Pressat. So this is a press release distribution service. And again, as a charity, you can request a free account and you can use that um, to post your press releases um, for free. Um, okay, so I think... Um, that's it from me. Uh, and um, yes, if anyone has any questions, uh, yeah. please let me know. Brilliant. Well, thank you very, very much, um, Julia, for this very insightful uh, story. It's powerful story and powerful storytelling. Um, I'll dive straight into the questions because we have already quite a few um, and uh, yeah one uh, question from from Phil um, how did you elevate the film in the YouTube rankings to increase its visibility and get it seen by the widest possible audience what the, what are the actions you took okay, so um, well both of the videos are on the channels um, websites on the on their own channels YouTube channels so we don't have much of a control over those hmm. um, we, yeah, so this was a bit of a, um, I suppose, problem as well, because sometimes they are a bit protective as well, even with mm -hmm. um, posting links, you know, to us, mm -hmm. uh, they, they tagged us here and there, but this is so we basically just did our own usual social media and direct emails and, and, and so yep, on. About it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, because it's Vice News, you know, it has really, really wide reach. Anyway. Oh, yes, it was on Vice Channel. Yeah, Vice yeah, News yeah, Channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they might not be that huge in Europe, but we see we got a lot of support and from Canada and US, mm. uh, for example, through that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. So, so you you sort of benefited also from the reach of 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 Vice to really put your your message to to wide audience. Perfect. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, somebody asking, uh, how do you get nominated for an award? Um, do you have to enter to be considered, or can you be nominated? How, how does that work? And can you tell us a little bit more about the .dot org Impact Awards? Yes, so we had to enter those. So with all, all the awards I think that I'm aware of, you usually have to enter. 
Mm -hmm. um, so um, you do have to always um, provide references as well, uh, you know, so so they are being checked properly. You know, in our case, um, Saha, uh, the, the, the reporter actually gave, um, I can't remember if it was for this one or for the charity awards in the UK, um, gave references and other charities that we have worked with. Um, so you do have to, so you have to check the deadlines and so on, but yeah, it's all um, our own application. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And and do you uh, c can you tell us your experience using the dot org impact awards? Perhaps was it? Yeah. Oh, all the all the ladies they're absolutely amazing. Um, yes, the experience has been really really great. Well, we don't know the winners yet. That's in mm -hmm. the next couple of weeks or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, um, I think there was um, almost thousand nominations, and then they <clears throat> chose. Uh, 35 organizations within seven wow. categories or five um, per each category, um, you know, so um, yeah, we applied and then we're very, I have to say, we were very, very surprised to hear back, very nicely surprised yeah. because mm. that's international award, you know, mm -hmm. and um, our trustees are flying to the ceremony um, soon in Washington yes. um, for, for that, um, so quite exciting, yes, and I think also I think, you know, um, it's because of the impact awards, um, you know, that, that that means quite a lot. Um, so we had to really show uh, properly, you know, the impact that we have made. And, and again, I think the documentaries also help with this. Um, it's just the fact that, that somebody independent and made mm -hmm. a documentary, you know, and none of the journalists or proper reporters, you know, would have published something that they haven't checked out themselves properly because they are putting yeah. their name so you know that's that's kind of yeah, yeah, and then that's powerful, and obviously best of luck for uh for for the awards uh mm -hmm. I know, but yeah, I think it, it, you know it's really it's really important what you you're saying out there there's there's quite a few awards there's obviously uh, the dot org impact awards, but there's also the the u k uh, char uh film charity you no know, charity film awards as well um so there's there's quite a few and and um my, my guess is that it's obviously free to enter but you you need to yeah. to to have a, again a strong story because this is the story that people will resonate with. They would get emotionally attached to to your cause and your mission. So, um, hence why film is very very powerful. Um, so yeah, and um, from Sophie, that was more about the funding data. So, what what sort of funding databases do you use? Um, and you mentioned you did a lot of research. So, was it just Google? Did you use some specific specific databases? Oh, we we trying everything basically. Mm -hmm. and, you know, for for the UK, for the UK, um, we've used Grin, and we are using a lot of you know charity commission. The advanced search is really really good, but then you know you've got so many results. So the charity excellence um, framework, yep. they they are very very good as well. Um, so we kind of combine, um, you know, all the databases because we are an international charity. You know, we also use funds for NGOs. Uh, as well, and um, a couple of international sort of databases, you know, things that I sometimes come across, um, you know, even on Google, you know, for the US. Um, for the US, it's a little bit more difficult, um, but, you know, we're using GuideStar and um, and just a lot of Googling and comparing similar organizations and, you know, who yeah. funds them, basically. So there's, a, yeah, I spend a lot of time, basically, on my laptop, just researching, yeah. researching, researching, yeah researching yes yes absolutely and uh, and yeah yeah charity excellence mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. is is a is a great way for uh, for all our uk based uh, um attendees that that's something to 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 check out there's also uh, an organization called brevio um which can also um help this the uh, esc i think so there's there's quite a few places and and i guess also um um i don't know if in your case you you okay opportunity to but ask people and other, um, other charities from your network for a report or on um, what sort of you know, foundation they've, they've applied to, the, the sort of success they have. So it's always too good to hear. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear what I said? Oh. I kind of had, oh, you were breaking up, but are you asking me for what networks we've used? Yes. Um, have, oh, did I actually 
Um, yes, I meant if you also had heard from peers and, and asked to, yeah. to, yeah, to yeah, yeah. IT um, yeah. and it used and yeah, I actually use Facebook a lot for that. Different groups for charities. Mm -hmm. They are fantastic groups. Um, it's like a fundraising chat, trust fundraising hub. There's few of these really, really good um, groups. And and I have to say, everyone has been so supportive. We are also members of like small international charities sort of coalition and uh, millions of them basically. But um, most of them are super, super useful. Mm. Um, well, we exchange information uh, and this works really, really well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, great. I mean, um, loads of uh, loads of very people in the chat. So well done, Julia, for a very good presentation. Um, it's been really interesting and and quite, you know, quite inspiring and empowering to to see how you 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 help turn things around despite the, the challenges mm -hmm. COVID and how you you manage to you know to raise more funds to um, to help your your mission. So thank you very much. Today. No, thank you very much to everyone who was patient enough uh, to stay with me, uh, and thank you <laughs> for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if Julia, you you'll be around a little because I think perhaps some people would like to ask um, some questions or reach out to you. Um, so if you have any any questions we may not have had a chance to answer now, please feel free to reach out to, to Julia. Um, and yeah, and best of luck for the uh, Impact Awards. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you again. <laughs> much so um yeah well thank you to everyone who has you know, attended this session you can obviously rate this about uh, when you're about to leave um our next session um and the last of this first day of digital fundraising summit would be called eggs and basket our new digital advertising channels a bad idea um we will be uh, speaking uh, to matt collings the managing director of platypus digital um so i will see you in a short while exactly at uh half two uh 14 uh 30 so um yeah looking forward to uh to seeing you again and in the meantime whilst you've taken your break please don't hesitate to check our partner section um and you know chat with one another see you later